Hey everyone, uh, when patients come into our uh, clinic here, the number one question they have on their mind is what they can be doing to improve IVF success rates. And this is a very valid question because uh, IVF is a procedure that takes a very large investment, financially, emotionally, mentally, and um, your time as well. So leading up to IVF patients here, you're usually doing a whole prenatal you know, preparation um, procedure to for three to five months to help them prepare for the IVF. So there's a lot that goes into a single IVF. And so we always want to look at from an evidence-based perspective, is there uh, anything else we can be adding or considering or discussing that may potentially improve success rates for patients? So the medication um, that I want to chat with you about today is baby aspirin. And baby aspirin is something that's been studied for a while now. So I've seen a lot of uh, different studies and systematic reviews evaluating for the efficacy of something like baby aspirin and how it may or may not impact IVF success rates. Now, before we jump into whether it works or not, I want to break down what are the various parameters we're actually looking at. So when we look at IVF, we have something called a positive implantation rate. So how many patients go on to actually have implantation? Then we look at clinical pregnancies. So a clinical, a positive clinical pregnancy is considered when um, implantation occurs, we see a, a positive home urine pregnancy test, a positive blood test to confirm uh, pregnancy, and we have a first ultrasound to confirm that there is in fact a pregnancy and a fetal heart re- heartbeat can be detected. If uh, those criteria are met, it's a positive clinical pregnancy. And then we look at something called the live birth rate. So how many of those patients that got pregnant went on to give birth to a live baby? And the pregnancy did not terminate in miscarriage or in a stillbirth. So you can see that we have various measures along that whole pregnancy journey from the IVF, from the implantation, all the way to giving birth. And it's important to know it's just because we have a positive clinical pregnancy with a certain treatment doesn't always mean that it actually increases the live birth rate. So the number one parameter we want to see go up for any treatment with uh, fertility treatments is the live birth rate. So the number of patients going on to complete the pregnancy are actually seeing uh, a live birth. So baby aspirin was evaluated in a systematic review and meta-analysis a while ago, and they looked at over 13 randomized clinical trials. And out of all those trials, when they compiled the data, they broke it down into these various measures. So um, number one, we didn't see that the implantation rate actually improved with baby aspirin. Um, with, when it comes to clinical pregnancy, the research published a while back did not find that the clinical pregnancy rate went up um, compared to patients that didn't receive the, the baby aspirin. But what, what we did see is that the live birth rate for patients went up if they used a baby aspirin during their IVF. So they were significantly more likely to give birth to a live child after IVF had they used um, a baby aspirin during their treatment cycle. And then we're seeing newer research. There was a more recent study published, a clinical trial that found uh, baby aspirin may actually be associated with an increase in clinical pregnancy rates as well. Um, There's also various studies that have looked at the impact of baby aspirin on the thickness of the uterine lining. So this is a very key and important um, indicator for for pregnancy rates when patients are going for IVF, because if the uterine lining is too thin, usually below seven millimeters, the implantation rates tend to decrease. So we do have some studies that have found using a baby aspirin um, during a fertility treatment may actually bring the thickness of that uterine lining up as well. And some have found that they don't actually see an improvement in the uterine lining thickness. So we are seeing kind of some conflicting results, but overall, we've seen that the safety profile of this medication seems to be very high for patients. So it's definitely worthwhile considering uh, a discussion with your fertility doctor, with your licensed healthcare provider about baby aspirin and whether it's actually suitable for you or not. As a a blood thinner, which is what baby aspirin does, um, it affects the thromboxin A2 levels, it affects platelet aggregation, and it affects the um, resistance in, in the blood vessels. So we uh, see a decrease in the resistance of the blood vessels when patients take baby aspirin. And it usually allows for better um, blood perfusion to different organs, including the reproductive organs. So these are some of the mechanisms by which we see or hypothesize that baby aspirin may exert its beneficial effect. Um, and this latest systematic review also found for patients that are going for IVF, another big 
um, parameter we're looking for is what are the number of follicles that are retrieved. Um, they did find a positive association where patients who used uh, baby aspirin seem to have a large number of follicles on retrieval with IVF compared to patients that used placebo. Um, so this is something ongoing that we need larger trials to confirm. But we are seeing um, various parameters that may potentially um, be beneficially impacted from such a very simple medication and something that may have a very high safety profile for you. Um, now, it gets tricky when patients are taking other blood thinners or high-dose fish oil or something like vitamin E. So we have to be mindful and um, conscientious of what other medications or supplements a patient is taking because together, um, if, they, if we give too many blood thinners, that's obviously very dangerous as well. So this is something that needs to be discussed with a healthcare provider before you take anything for sure. Um, but it is worthwhile having that discussion. And um, when, just to clarify, when we're talking about baby aspirin, this is not the same as a regular aspirin. Okay, so the baby aspirin is referring to a very low dose. It's usually 81 to 100 milligrams, which is the dose that's used in these clinical trials for uh, patients trying to conceive through IVF. And it may be beneficial, uh, like I said, to see an increase in, in the follicle count, and it may increase the live birth rate. So even though we're not seeing an improvement in clinical pregnancy rates with the older research, also newer research is showing that it may improve clinical pregnancy rates, we do see that potential increase in live birth rates. And just from experience as well, like patients who've had a very thin uterine lining in the past um, have struggled to bring their uterine lining up, uh, baby aspirin can be used in combination with other supplements or medications um, in many cases to actually improve the thickness of that uterine lining as well. So that's an, um, something to consider for patients that may have a thin uterine lining. Um, and when we look at uh, these other, other supplements as well, such as vitamin E or pentoxifying, filing, um, you know, they, they have um, different, different mechanisms of action on how they would actually improve blood flow to the uterus, um, such as pentoxifiline, which seems to increase what we call red blood cell plasticity, so, or its flexibility. Um, and so it's important to just have a look at these uh, options available and to have that discussion with a healthcare provider. And, um, you know, baby aspirin is something that's been around for quite a while. And when we're looking at the overall cost of medications, it's one, probably one of the cheapest medications available um, and definitely worth having that conversation with your doctor. All right, everyone, if, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to send us a message or drop us a comment here. Take care.